Hello, and welcome to this overview of spinal cord compression as part of the NANSIG Revision Video Initiative. My name is Matt Sanders, and I'm a foundation trainee at Sheffield Teaching Hospitals. This presentation will go through some background of spinal cord compression and its clinical presentations before focusing on cord requirement compression and some aspects of its management. A summary of these slides will be available as a handout alongside this presentation. Compression of the spinal cord can be a neurosurgical emergency with need for timely surgery to relieve it. Given neurons in the spinal cord's limited ability for regeneration, a delay in decompression can result in irreversible cord damage, meaning potential lifelong loss of function. Cord compression has myriad causes, essentially anything which compromises the stability of the spine. But some of the more common causes are spinal trauma, prolapsed intervertebral discs, atlantoaxial subluxation, which is a complication of rheumatoid arthritis, and infection. Things to bear in mind would be TB infiltrating the spine, known as POTS disease, and discitis, which is often the result of a bacteremia, common seen in IVDUs. Bony metastases are also an important diagnosis to keep in mind. Whilst the cord can be compressed at any point, compression of the cord equina, which translates as horse's tail in Latin, produces characteristic signs and symptoms. Presentation of cord compression depends largely on the location of the lesion and the extent to which it impinges on it. For example, compression of the cord above the level of the first thoracic vertebra, so T1, can lead to tetraplegia, paralysis of all four limbs. This is sometimes known as quadriplegia. Core compression below T1 can cause a paraplegia, that is, paralysis of the lower limbs. Whereas significant compression can cause a complete paralysis of the affected limbs, a more minor impingement can cause a paresis, a weakness, or paresthesia, which is altered sensation, such as pain, numbness, and pins and needles. Compression of the cord requirement which lies caudal to the conus medullaris at the spinal level L1 in most adults, can result in corda equina syndrome, or CES, which we will discuss in more detail shortly. Red flag symptoms that warrant urgent investigation are any weakness in paresthesia, as previously mentioned, ataxia, urinary retention, and upper motor neuron signs. Always consider metastatic disease in any patients who are at high risk that present with back pain. A handy way to remember which tumours commonly metastasize to bone is by thinking of the five Bs. Breast, bronchus, biroid, bidney and prostate. Now let's focus on cord requirement compression. Its prevalence is fairly low, occurring in approximately 1 to 3 per 100,000 and in 2% of all herniated lumbar discs. Whilst CES can be the result of any lesion compressing the cord, as we've previously discussed, prolapse of the intervertebral discs at the L4-5 or L5-S1 levels are the most common cause. Usually CES has a sudden onset, with a clinical picture evolving over hours and days. Saddle or perianal paresthesia plus impairment of bladder, bowel or sexual dysfunction are required for a diagnosis of cord requirement syndrome to be made. Cord requirement can be further subdivided into CESI and CESR. CESI, an incomplete syndrome, will include some form of urinary disturbance, such as reduced urinary sensation, loss of desire to void, or poor stream, whereas CESR, a retention syndrome, means that the compression has been sufficiently significant to cause urinary retention and overflow incontinence. Other neurological symptoms may be present, but are not as consistently found as part of the syndrome. These include loss of lower limb reflexes, reduced anal tone, and asymmetrical weakness or sensory deficit. If uni or bilateral leg weakness plus saddle paresthesia and urinary symptoms are present, then there is a positive predictive value of over 95%. It is important to note that compression of the cord requina will cause a lower motor neuron picture, i.e. hypotonia, hyporeflexia, etc. This is not the case for compression of the C-spine. Compression here will cause upper motor neuron signs and symptoms in the affected limbs. It is important to remember that as many as 50% of presentations will have an atypical syndrome. Initial diagnosis can be made following a suggestive history and examination. 
Emergency MRI of the lumbar spine is the modality of choice. If compression of the cord requirement is confirmed, a referral to the local neurosurgical unit or spinal team should be made. Imaging should be performed by the referring team, as per guidelines set out by the Society of British Neurological Surgeons, SBNS, and the British Association of Spinal Surgeons, or BAS. If MRI is contraindicated, CT myelogram can serve as an alternative. Following referral to local neurosurgical units, patients in whom decompression is indicated can be transferred for surgery. BAS recommend that decompression should take place within 48 hours of onset of signs and symptoms. Delays in surgery can result in permanent neurological dysfunction. Not all pathologies require surgery. Some metastatic disease can be treated with targeted radiotherapy. Inflammatory conditions, such as ankylosing spondylitis, can be treated with steroids, and infective causes, such as discitis, can be treated with long-term antibiotic therapy. So, to summarise, acute core compression is a neurosurgical emergency. The etiology of compression is wide-ranging. Quarter-Aquinas syndrome results from compression of the lumbrosacral nerve roots, the most commonly prolapse of the L4-5 and L5-S1 intervertebral discs. It presents with saddle anaesthesia plus bladder, bowel or sexual dysfunction. The presence of other neurological symptoms, such as weakness, are variable. MRI lumbar spine is the imaging modality of choice. Where indicated, decompression should be within 48 hours of onset of symptoms so as to preserve neurological function. Thank you for watching and special thanks to Matthew Crank, neurosurgical trainee at Sheffield Teaching Hospitals. For further information on cord requina and spinal cord compression, visit the British Association of Spine Surgeons website at www.spinesurgeons.ac.uk and more information can also be found in Neurosurgery for Basic Surgical Trainees.